Welcome back, I'm Teresa Lepowski. Joining me this morning is Jeffrey Mendock, the artistic director behind the unique costumes for this performance. Jeffrey, tell us about the costumes. Sure, so I also want to make sure that we give proper credit to our costume designer, Sarah Lake Rayburn. Uh, Sarah? With, absolutely, without her, you know, uh, my ideas would just still be floating in the ether. Uh, in addition to our untraditional set, what we've also tried to do is uh, put costumes on our actors that are going to not only heighten their ability to tell their story but also put a focus back onto the story uh, which is truly all about these animals that have been given human characteristics and the world that they're living in in relation to the humans in the village. I heard that you're going to be using some pretty unique masks. What do those what do those have to do with the performance? Yes, so when I started doing research on the Jungle Book and everything that that entails, I started to discover these masks that have this African Indian uh, beginnings. And I said, well, I would love to be able to put all of our actors in masks for several reasons. And what we've created is an African Indian inspired mask. Uh, the traditional mask actually would cover the whole face. Uh, so what we're doing is just using half masks so that the actors don't have uh, any inhibitions around their mouths. And what we've done with that is taken it a step further and invited the students, once the masks are fully created, uh, to help design them and execute them. When What that means is help to put on different color beads or help to create different textures or designs on their masks so that they have a little bit of uh, personal flair to them, but also so that they evoke that kind of traditional mask feeling that we're going for. And what do you gain by essentially covering up most of the actor's face? Sure. Well, there's two things that we're trying to accomplish. The first is to educate our young actors on what it is like to use masks. It's called mask work in the theater world. Uh, it's a very specific kind of acting and a very specific way to communicate. It's also going to put a focus back on the story. We're not going to be thinking about, oh, look, there's animals talking on stage. We're going to think, oh, look at these actors that are using their animal characteristics to protect each other, to uh, get what they want and things like that, which is... Uh, something that we're always trying to do with our audience is to engage them in a story that they know, educate them about a story that they are unfamiliar with in terms of uh, people, places, and things, and then entertain them, which is uh, something that the Jungle Book does for everyone. Awesome. And I know last week we talked about the non-traditional set that you're using. This Absolutely. week we're talking about the non-traditional costumes you're using. What makes you want to stray so far from the original Jungle Book story that we all know um, for Thunder Bay Theater's performance? Sure. Well, we talked about it a little bit last week. And one of the questions that I had when I decided that we were going to do the Jungle Book was, here is this beautiful story about a faraway land that we know through the Disney show or the, and, and the Disney movie, but most of our patrons have never been to India or Africa. You know, they only know it through the Jungle Book. So how can we possibly bring that to the stage and bring it to life and just expect everyone to be okay with what's happening? So by stepping outside of our comfort zone and stepping outside of the box, we're hoping that everybody is on the same playing field when they walk in the door. So parents and kids and grandparents and teachers all have to use their imaginations in the same way and allow themselves to find that understanding of what they're watching and find out what the importance of the story is. And that's a good point that you made stepping out of the box, kind of allow teaching students almost to do that. Absolutely. Um, with a student production, I know that you said there are three basic principles that you're trying to um, accomplish. accomplish. Yep. You're trying to engage students, you're trying to educate them, and you're trying to excite them. So. What kind of lessons or takeaways are you trying to give the students from taking this jungle book and just straying so far from the original? Sure. Well, there's lots of things, and I could talk about this for an hour, but the main things, uh, you know, are the basic things. You know, for this production specifically, we always focus on the 10 to the 21-year-olds, so either new students who have never been on stage before or high school students who are really uh, sharpening their teeth and getting ready to either pursue this in college or just be a part of, you know, our bigger shows where there are professional members uh, in the cast. So the first step is just getting them excited and into interested and engaged in the theater. The second is uh, just cultivating that sense of teamwork. There's just as much teamwork that goes on in a play as there is when you step on a football field or you step onto a basketball court. Uh, the preparation that goes into this kind of thing. The, uh, the teamwork that is built around, if you do not know your lines, you are hurting the rest of the team. And really holding these kids, even at 10 years old, to those expectations is really important for their development and for their growth as artists. 
And real quick, uh, before we leave, I Absolutely. wanted to ask you, I heard that you casted a girl in the role of Mowgli. Yes. So tell us about that decision. Well, this little girl specifically has been in a few shows with me, and uh, at the day of audition, she walked into that audition room, said, Mr. Mindock, I'm going to cut my hair. I want to be Mowgli. And I sat back and I said to myself, what a wonderful opportunity for, for me as a director, for her as a performer, for our community as a group of you know, educated people and excited people to allow and, and inspire you know, this young girl to play a role that is normally played by a boy. And in my opinion, you know, the theater is where that is supposed to happen. The theater is where we're not supposed to, you know, think about things just in gender roles or in this is the way it's supposed to be. The theater is where we can completely shed our skin, go into another character, and allow these things to happen. And with our concept of using costumes that, you know, are more gender neutral and things like that and behind the masks, you know, what an amazing opportunity for uh, the little boys and little girls to come to a show and say, Mom, Mowgli is being played by a girl, but it's normally a boy. Why is that happening? Why is that okay? And the simple answer is because Mowgli is simply a child who doesn't understand that she or he is a human, and they're living with wolves, and how do we deal with that, and how do we overcome that right. conflict? And that's true of all of the characters. Another uh, role that is supposed to, be play supposed to be played by a man is Bagheera, and it's being played by uh, one of our high school females, and she has just got those qualities that you look for in Bagheera about being, uh, you know, uh, a, a security blanket for Mowgli and being right. able to overcome those things. So we're really excited about that. And the point of all that is to really put the focus back on the story and realize that these characters were written just as they're supposed to be and that we're all working together to overcome our obstacles and our goals. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeffrey.